The scene is Athens, 400 BC. A bunch of the local brainiacs have gotten together. The wine is being passed and the ideas are flowing fast and furious. The debate's in full force and Socrates has the floor. Who enters? Alcibiades, drunk, a beautiful man, hopelessly in love with his mentor, Socrates. And uniquely, in all of these dialogues, Socrates doesn't get the last word. Alcibiades does. Why? Because passion, Plato seems to be saying, is essentially and mercilessly human. And the best that we can hope to do is to quell it through relentless discipline. To Socrates, the healthy life is comprised of constant focus by the individual to excise those forces that weaken or, or confuse his understanding of the world around him. He implores us to devote our lives to this kind of control, meaning our every waking moment. Socrates recognized what every philosopher and religion, for that matter, in the history of the world, from Plato to Aristotle, from Epicurus to the Stoics, from the Judeo-Christians to the Buddhists, have all observed, which is that the balance needed for a happy life is illusory. And as soon as in our gorgeously flawed human way, we think that we've attained it, we're pretending divinity and we're gonna crash like Icarus flaming into the sea. So think about that this weekend when you think you're on top of the world and then you pour a pitcher of beer down your throat and chase that upperclassman who's out of your league. <laughs> <laughs> Aristotle is next week. Don't just look at it as words. Imagine the scene. These were people, they were alive like you and me. They thought these things. Breathe them into life. Your choice is to expand your business or we shut you down entire. I ain't interested. He's offering you a way out. Pug wants his money. Check that pickle. And if they ain't got my money, kill those sons of... How did you get this number? Is everything all right? My brother's been murdered. Hell, that's awful. How? He got shot with a crossbow. They're inexplicably popular where I come from. I suppose I have to go home. You sure do look like him. I think that's what they mean by identical. Brady, what the hell is going on? I guess I kind of got resurrected. What? You had him tell me you were dead? Well, all right, I'm sorry about that, but there weren't no other way for me to get you to come down here. Here's the thing. If I don't get up to Tulsa, I'm gonna be in some real trouble. I need you to be me, just like we used to back at home. We don't even look alike anymore. Has that occurred to you? What do you think? You've given yourself the stupidest haircut in human history. So Bolger says you're a famous a banker. real famous. And they pay you for that? Yeah. She's a poet. I tried to get her and Colleen a three-way once, but wouldn't neither of them go for it. This here's where I keep it alive. <laughs> hey, hey. How is it possible that you are so brilliant and so ignorant at the same time? Mm, yeah, I don't think so. No? You know what you was getting into with him, and he sure ain't going away. So, now you want me to be nice. You got a higher IQ than your brother, and he just passed you by. It ain't gotta go this way. Why would you want it to look like a hate crime? Bring it on. So it don't look like a drug crime.